How was Calgary? Cold. Cold. And it oh. wasn't, and it wasn't even cold. Like it was actually very seasonal, seasonally warm when I was there. Like warmer than Portland. We had snow. I saw. It's weird. It I don't weird. know what's normal. So <laughs> And you had a good Christmas and you had a good New Year's? We did. It was different this year. Just has to be different. Yeah. Just, and so in thinking of new traditions, changing things up, that was part of what happened this year. And so it's, it almost, it makes it more, you're more aware of, what's going on because you're not just doing what you've done every year for 38 years right. you do something different it was fun we had a good time I saw on social media so I'm actually taking a social media detox cleanse so for one month I am not going on Facebook or Instagram how are you doing with that are you okay it's yeah, just I'm, like are you all I'm, right I'm getting very inspired at all the content that's going to be like exploding out of my brain in February. Oh, yes. Yeah, so what made you do that? So I, I was just thinking of some challenges and some things I wanted to focus on. And I feel like sometimes social media can be great for inspiration and it can also numb what we truly feel and what we truly think. So I wanted to take a step back and reevaluate some things without any external stimuli. That's fascinating because you were like the social media, you're, you're my inspiration for both social media. I feel very grateful that you say that because I feel like it's a, something I'm not very good at. I really struggle with social media because it's nothing that I grew up with. I'm learning a lot about the algorithm and what works and I enjoy it. But I don't feel like I'm good at it yet. Yeah, I just wanted to take a step. So I posted on Instagram. I said, everything is fine. I'm just taking a break and I'll see everybody next month. Yeah. It was really interesting. I got a call on Christmas. must have been Christmas Eve or maybe it was New Year's Eve from the of a girl that I treated in 2021. Okay. And the girl had cervical discs, a thoracic disc, lumbar discs, facets, lumbar facets, a vestibular injury, undiagnosed vestibular injury, undiagnosed concussion. So the kid comes in and she's in her mid twenties. Kid comes in and she's, I don't know what's wrong with me and I'm not myself and life will never be the same and I'll never recover and blah, blah, blah. And the mom at the end of the two weeks that she was with me, she said, and, I, and it was probably June or July of 21. And she said, can I go snowboarding in December? And I said, absolutely not. You won't be ready. But you get your present glasses, you do your rehab, you do your exercises for your neck and your low back, you start walking, then you start running, you recondition, and in December of 2022, you can go snowboarding. So I told her this a half before now. So I get a phone call from the mom, and I recognize the name and went, oh my God, instantly my brain goes to the kid crashed and burned, something awful has happened, blah, blah, blah. And it's, oh, do I take a phone call from a patient at eight o'clock at night in New Year's Eve? So I took the call and it was the mom telling me that her daughter was snowboarding double black diamond runs that day. She started snowboarding three days ago. She started with the blue squares. She did one green circle, then she did blue and then she did black diamond. And then the day that mom called me, she was doing double black diamond runs snowboarding a year and a half after she was completely disabled, basically. It was like, so I posted that, speaking of social media, I posted that and it's, that's what makes it all worthwhile to do whatever it costs you to go to work and show up and do whatever. 
that outcome is what makes it worthwhile. And all the comments were, way to go, Carol. And it's like, after about 22 of them, I went, I had to post, that's not the point. It's not the, that I did anything special. It's that, you know, that little emoji, the one with that one? Yes. That's not the point. That's not the reason I posted this. The reason I posted this was the ability of someone to recover and reinvent their life because they have something, they have a goal. She wanted to snowboard on Christmas break. Yeah. Because the ability of the person to recover, but the whole point of the post was we can do this. It's not that I did anything. It's that everybody that's ever taken the core, that's ever listened to John Rusky, that's ever listened to the concussion conversations, the Bill Clearfield, the Roger Billica, the Neil Nathan, the people that are going to lecture this year, anybody that learns what we have to teach with FSM, not just about what the frequencies do, but what the how to look at the whole process of recovery. So cervical disc, lumbar disc, those are easy. And yes, I have to videotape the exercises that they're supposed to do, but those are easy. That's a no brainer. This has been disabled with nerve pain and neck pain for two and a half, three years. And for us, it's a disc easy. Vestibular injury, complicated, but once you diagnose them, now, thanks to John Rusky, we know what to do about them. And it's anybody can do this. That was the point. So that's the social media thing. And the other thing with social media that you did that's really important, there was, I think I saw it on television. Everybody posts, most people post their A-sides. You post the cool things that happen, the happy family pictures, all of that. And it takes a lot of courage to post the stuff I'm dealing with. I don't have that kind of courage. It's like nobody needs to know that I'm healthier now than I was eight years ago. And nobody needs to know how sick I've been for 15 years. It's, that's not the point. So it, it takes a lot of courage making that public in a way that isn't morbid or creepy. You did a great job at it. Thanks. My goal with social media is to inspire. Like when mm -hmm. I met with somebody to help me with social media, she said, what is your goal for doing this, for go creating this account? Because it's FSM sports. It's not Kim Pitt. I try to keep it business, but I am the business and I am the brand and it's everything. And I said, yeah, my, my goal is to inspire people. My goal is to inspire patients to, to be healthy. My goal is to inspire practitioners to stay on the FSM horse as long as they can and everything in between that. And I, I do think it's really important to talk about the struggles we face as practitioners, the failure, and I don't want to say failures, but the missteps, the sideways steps, the fact that it took us maybe three treatments longer than we wanted it to figure out what was really going on with the patient, because it's not always a slam dunk. And for patients, I think it's important for everybody to realize that it is a process and not everybody's process looks the same. Their steps to success are like that roller coaster we talk about with the FSM learning curve. It's not linear. It takes, and it takes a while to, it's called pattern recognition. So for example, I got a phone, a text message from a dear friend and practitioner, like 20 years, she core in 99 or 2000. And I got a text message horrible migraine for two weeks, talk to Cliff, who's her husband, and he's lectured for us. He's an interventional radiologist, one of the smartest people I know. He loves FSM. And they'd done imaging of her neck and this and that. And she, I said, yeah, wait, but what started it? She had an upper respiratory infection. Did you test her for COVID? No, uh-uh. Okay, 
then he threw in as an aside, yeah, she's had three TIAs in two weeks. S excuse me? So this migraine has been going, started with a respiratory infection, migraine for two weeks, TIA symptoms that affect the right side of her tongue and her right arm only. And I went, she had COVID. She's having TIAs. The headache is from COVID. Use these six virus frequencies and these four or five tissues. So the capillaries, the arteries, the cortex, the medulla, and the vagus probably. And the headache went from an eight to a two in about two, three hours. And that was the step that he missed. It was just an upper respiratory infection. If it's an upper respiratory infection and she has, I said, when was her last TIA? Yesterday. Oh. That's a good face. But as an MD, he didn't put it together with upper respiratory in my world at this time in our lives is COVID mean blood clots. Blood clots mean TIAs. TIA and COVID headache that goes together. Right. So Cynthia. I was going to say, speaking of go together, let's get, there's a question just now. Can you remind me of what we do for long COVID, especially loss of smell? Going to work with somebody today. Long COVID is the, the frequencies for the virus, 38, 41, 44, 56, 189, 160. There's six of them. And it's the capillaries, 162. The arteries, 62. That's where the ACE2 receptors are. And for the smell, I used the ethmoid sinus. It's incredibly well vascularized. So it's ethmoid sinus is 36, 36, I think. 25 is normal sinus. I have 75. Look up, Cynthia, look up ethmoid sinus. And then if you look at where smell is processed, it's in the cortex. And 36, I just took out my buddy. There you go. Um, yeah. And great. The cortex and maybe the pons. I don't think so. You have to look that up. I don't, there's not enough RAM. But long COVID so far, the sense of smell has been easy. I've done that three times. So I'm three for three with smell. That's easy. Biggest challenge has been the fatigue. And that's because I'm not sure where it's coming from. So we know that the kidneys are incredibly vascularized and patients with COVID came in and kidney failure with elevated liver enzymes, plus heart and brain, everything that's well vascularized. Male patients were coming in with their only symptom being testicular pain. So then you have to ask, well, if the kidneys are well vascularized, is the fatigue coming from simply 116? COVID in the immune system, raising inflammation and creating fatigue? Or is it something to do with the adrenals? I don't know. It's, so that's the long COVID story. Did the review. Okay, good. Exactly. Let me take Dana's other question. Yeah. Because it's, speaking of B-sides, the ketamine therapy for a myriad of reasons, but noticed a lot of CRPS patients in the discussion forums as at what seems very high doses, where the clinic here in Texas is only 30 to 200 milligrams, guessing the lower doses are for depression, anxiety, PTSD, higher doses are for treating pain. What are your thoughts on ketamine therapy? They use ketamine for CRPS, IV. It's an anesthetic. It's a dissociative anesthetic, and it just knocks them out, and they just put them to sleep for X number of hours, and I'm not sure exactly what they do with CRPS. But as we headed into holiday season in November, I had an appointment with my naturopath and happened to mention that I was having a lot of trouble with depression and just not wanting to be here, right? So I did the stuff I needed to do, bought a new couch so that the scene was different. And I was still having difficulty fine when I was in the office walk in the house, go into a dark hole. And she said, they are using microdose ketamine as a nasal spray. They use it at night because it makes you sleepy. And they noticed it because they 
like with CRPS, like a patient that has surgery or has ketamine as anesthesia, the patient would mention in post-op follow-up, by the way, I haven't been suicidal in three months. So my naturopath said, why don't you try it? And I was like, okay. Now, meanwhile, I'm running concussion in Vegas on myself every night. So in the morning, I wake up, I'm fine. But I still have this six-hour period where it's pretty horrible. So it's 25 milligrams in a nasal spray. And you can use any place from one to four. And the next day, and for two days, no problem. So for PTSD, depression, and anxiety, the FDA has actually approved micro, it's called microdose. So the 900 milligrams IV is macro dosing, and they use higher doses than that IV. The patient literally just knocks them out. But microdose, there's a prescription version. I'm using a compounded version. I don't know about anxiety, but for depression and PTSD, the studies are actually quite compelling. It's interesting. Wow. It's one of those situations where I believe in balance, right? I get a little frustrated with people that want to do everything with frequencies. It's no, just no. What's the frequency for estrogen to help with memory and hot flashes in the brain? There isn't one. You, you give the patient topical estrogen, balance it with progesterone, and do topical testing. We should be dead at 46. There's nobody that should still be alive and healthy at 76. So there's, it's a balance. <clears throat> And you can still treat the pituitary. I think Dana actually had a question about menopause hot flashes. Do you want well, to get to that before that. we go further? You're not there yet, but it's coming in a quite a long while. Don't worry about it. Random. Oh, I haven't found hot flashes to be connected to the vagus. They're worse in the middle of the night. So they may be related to dreaming, but I haven't ever connected them with a particular thought process okay so i am dana why are they doing i am no i'd start with microdosing yeah grief and depression that's where i was thank god it's magic but i am is you can't reverse it and you can't microdose it see if you can talk them into they don't do microdosing here in te texas I'm not going to say anything about Texas, but you can find somebody to do microdosing. The thing is, do it on a Friday because the, if the dose is too high, the day afterwards, you're just useless. And then the day after that, you feel great. So good luck. Okay. Okay. We have a theme for today that Thank I am you. going to make sure that this train of ours circumvents back to. Thank and you. It shouldn't shouldn't be any surprise because we're talking about new beginnings. Yes. So I love New Year's. I love fresh starts. As a kid, I loved getting school supplies. I loved the first day of school. Yes. All these things. At we had a great New Year's Eve. I was celebrating with my daughter's hockey team. We brought them up to Calgary. They played hockey with the Canadian. Oh, really. Oh, it's yeah. great. It was wonderful. And teenagers are so hopeful. Kids are hopeful inherently. And I wanted to take some of that joy as they were watching the fireworks and just bottle it up and use it for inspiration. And I was thinking like, why do I love new beginnings so much? I think it is just the excitement and the hope that comes from starting something new. And I think that's why I love being a therapist so much because every day regardless if you've seen that patient for two visits or 200, it's a fresh start every time that patient walks into your clinic. Yep. And FSM has taught me to be open, to not get attached to what I want to do, to be creative, to be humble. In the moment. In the moment yeah. and to be a little daring and to be a little bold because we're not really going to do anything 
catastrophic. It's such a safe environment to practice in. And what a blessing FSM is as a tool to make you a better clinician. I don't know one tool, one piece of continuing education that's out there that is a gift to you as a practitioner and as a gift to your patients. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the new beginning part, my way of saying that when it comes to practice is I hate doing reruns. If you're doing exactly the same thing, two sessions in a row, you miss something. So you may repeat like neck and shoulder. Shoulder is not a one visit fix. Sure. So it's every visit is a new beginning, but I totally agree. It's daring. Can I tell you a story? It'll, it's of course, a yes. a little bit of a, you know how I say we can't put tissue back that's not there? Yes. That's our limitation with MS. And I have an MS patient who's quite advanced. He's in a wheelchair, electric wheelchair. He has use of his left hand. So he has a joystick and a headrest and no use of his right arm and shoulder. And he came in and he said, I got MS for a reason. And I want you to treat me. I want to be able to use my hand. That was a fairly limited goal. It's, okay. Well, he's working with Joe Dispenza. He's done the emotional work and the spiritual work for getting over an abusive childhood and an abusive marriage and all the bad stuff. He's 53 and has been hurt and angry and down on himself and all that stuff. And in the last two to three, he's reversed that. He's developed compassion and self-awareness and the four agreements. And so I love it when he comes in because we talk metaphysics and philosophy and all of that. He can't put tissue back that's not there. Except the first day he came in, his right hand had one pound of grip strength. His left hand had 11. So I hooked the wrap up around his neck, put the towel around his right hand. And at the end of the first visit, he had five pounds in his right hand. The next session, he started at five pounds in the right hand and he ended up at 11. The third visit, he started at 11.6 and they ended up at 19 pounds grip strength in his right hand. And his left hand went from 12 to 36. I can't put tissue back that's not there, but something is changing. And the conversation I had with him is the nice thing about his personality and about the work that he did is I didn't scare him when I said this. MS was a gift. It puts you on this path. If you hadn't been forced to sit in a wheelchair for the last 10 years, would you have done all of this internal work as a way of healing yourself? He said, absolutely no way. Your goal is to walk again. I will see that goal. And you have to forgive me if I say to you, it doesn't matter whether or not you walk again because the healing that you have accomplished you have healed yourself and that gives us a chance to heal your body he done the most important part and he paused a second and he said absolutely he said i am going to walk again i said absolutely i'll see that for you but you do you understand that it doesn't matter and he said yeah actually i am not my body I'm my soul and it's just like in what world, in what metaverse could you have that conversation with somebody? Yes. So you run concussion in Vegas on one machine, tree torn and broken, and necrosis in the mind 
and the spinal cord, central myelin and peripheral. And another machine was on 40 and 396, and another machine, one and 396. And I can get his flexors to work so he can grip. So I have to figure out a way of getting the extensors to work. So if Ben Catholi is listening, somebody tell me how to get the ex extensors to work. So we talked about eccentric contraction yeah. of the extensors. I said, have your caregiver lift your hand up and then you push it down. That's flexors. But in order to control the drop, lift it passively and then control the drop eccentrically, right? Yeah. Without yeah. yeah. What about 475? on B channel, nerve sheath. Do you use I've that? Never, does it work? I, I've, I've used it in a couple it. instances. It's never a slam dunk, but it's done something enough times that I never not, that I haven't totally dismissed it. I'm never optimistic with it, but I am still open-minded with it. And I have only had success with 81 with it, increase the secretions to the nerve sheath. Okay, I'll try it. It's after I failed with it five or six times, it just like ain't gonna work. I know the bird on my shoulder just is loud enough sometimes that I have to keep okay. going back there. I can go with that. I know I like the idea of it more than I actually like the results, but I, like I said, it, it sparked enough and it's done something enough times, but it hasn't held. Do you think what you're doing with this patient will hold for how long are you? It has held him in October. November, those visits are about a month apart just because of finances. And when you take somebody from one pound to five pounds and he comes in a month later and he's still at five pounds, it's dang. And then you take him from five pounds to 11 pounds and he comes back in at 11 pounds yeah. a month later. And then now he's at 19 or 16. It, it's holding. Wow. I didn't think it would. So. I have no idea. And he has developed a new lesion in his brain. The confusing thing about MS is that there are patients with a lot of lesions and not much in the way of symptoms. And there are mm -hmm. patients with a few lesions and a lot of symptoms. So it's not just the lesions in the myelin. And if you think of it as an autoimmune disease, and of course you treat the vagus, infection, stress, and trauma. So is there an infection we're missing with him? None that we can figure out. Stress, yes. And we just keep hammering and turning on the vagus. You have to listen to when I had Rob DiMartino on. He talked a lot about MS. And I want to say he found correlations to history with chronic tonsillitis. So there is a strep. Yeah. yeah. And there was something else I thought he had mentioned too. And he's getting good results treating MS. I'm so excited to have him back at the advanced it's like a star studded cast. I was looking at the schedule that you put out and I was like, wow. Yeah. How yeah. are we going to have enough bandwidth to take everything in that week? It's going to be. Well, and scheduling the symposium just turned into a crazy making because of the case reports. Three weeks ago, we had maybe eight and now we have 18. Wow. So I had to tell all the case report people, I wasn't willing to prejudge and say yes and no and whatever. So we'll go from 30 minutes to 20 minutes. So we're doing three in an hour. And I'm suggesting that each one of them create a poster presentation that they can hang on the wall. So during the breaks, people can go and read the stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it is. I just want to say, that's why I was late. I, ordered the awards the coolest lecture thank you that you ever get comes from fsm it's totally true yeah i went and did that today and I, we have the ruth johnston award and i have a surprise for one of our speakers it was just an award that they had there and i went that is really pretty i want to give that to somebody oh get that too and so it's that will be fun that's exciting and then, then the the inners got things that said, hey, I presented a case. Oh, and Wafa, her last name starts with an A. She is from Kuwait, and she published a paper on post-herpetic neuralgia. Wow. 
been accepted. It's indexed and abstracted. It's on FSM and post repetitive neuralgia. She let me be a co-author for some reason. Amazing. So we now have a published paper on PHM. And so I said, well, I need your wire transfer information. And one more case report, don't let me forget. There's a collected case on Ehlers-Danlos that Terry Turner, she is submitting for publication. She's an osteopath. And I said, if you can get it accepted by February, I will give you a check. Oh, the papers are coming. It's funny. I was so excited. I was able to teach a class in Calgary while I was there. I did a, a private hybrid for a clinic that I used to work at with Dr. Rich Robinson, who oh, did you like at Rich's? Yes. Yeah. And it's so funny how it's come full circle because I had met Rich working with Joel, who was our Olympic swimmer. Rich was such a skeptic of FSM. He's a science guy. He's a sports guy. And I get it. Like that was me too, until I saw it in action. And then once you see it, you can't unsee it. So we had worked together with Joel. And then he said, can I get you at my clinic? Because what we're doing is amazing. And I need you in the same building as me. Okay. And so I said, sure. And he says, but I am going to give you eight of my craziest stubborn patients and crazy. I don't mean like psychological and like just very stubborn is not responding to anything traditional and physical medicine. Yeah. And I said, okay, I love a challenge. Bring it. And yeah. it was slam dunk after slam dunk. And I think after four or five, I'm like, okay, when are the hard patients going to start coming in? He's like, I hate you. <laughs> So it was just very exciting. It was almost like teaching like, the first. The what made them easy? Treating the hip capsule was one of the oh. ones that was like just deep hip pain, treating the periosteum, facet. Rich is a chiropractor. So we're treating a bunch of degenerative disc disease, a bunch of facet syndrome, and just making his life easier as a chiropractor who is seeing so many patients. He's very good with ART, but he needed the tissue, the nervous system, he needed that patient in a different state. So his adjustments would be more effective. And so this is. And chiropractors also need to understand muscles move bones and the nervous system moves the muscles. So it, adjusting the joints, I'm a terrible chiropractor because adjusting the joints does zilch. Right. Nervous system, muscles, muscle, bones. Right. Yay. Yay. So we're a rock star. Right. And Rich had taken the course when we brought you to Canada back in 2013. They ignore it. And who would believe it? And it, it wasn't easy back then. No, it wasn't. And it didn't fit his model of how he wanted to integrate it. He really needed another me to be there. And so he finally has some brilliant manual therapist, osteopaths working in his clinic. But I didn't want to give up three days and or two days of my Christmas with my kids. So they did the hybrid model. So I I filmed the FSM sports course during COVID, which is no longer, I'm not putting that out anymore. I just feel better. The FSM sports needs to be an in-person course. Okay. So I feel better teaching it in person. So I said, listen, you guys are brilliant. Why don't you do the videos and do all the content that way? And then I'll come in for one day and we'll do all the fun stuff in one day. So it was Easy. so much fun. And these clinicians in Calgary are so inspiring and they ask so many great questions and you've taught for so long you know those people in the room and you're just your heart starts beating because you know they're going to take the ball and run with it and yeah. just and even with the emails that. that are coming in already I'm just like yes yeah. yes that's so exciting speaking of doing the sports in person yes you know that we're doing what four live five day and we're going to do the two-day practicums for people that have taken the course, the five-day on video. But I have a perfectly good 20 by 20 classroom in Portland. I am going to suggest that perhaps you could do a two-day sports in yes. Rapdale. Yeah. And then we all go across the street for Italian food. Yes. Day. done we just have to get it on the calendar we'll just pick a date yay let's just i love the way we just do things we just make things happen like that it's like it's just yeah yeah 
you say it and what is what's the star trek thing make it so right yeah i like that let's well, get to so number two make it so number two number <laughs> one this is number one yeah all okay. right did we get to all the questions because i hate leaving people hanging we did the menopause one okay mm -hmm. leaf treat blood for covid long or short i wouldn't because the red blood cells are not no not where the ace receptors are the covid virus launches or attacks the ace 2 receptor and that's in the blood vessels so the organs and the systems affected by both long and short COVID, right, acute and chronic COVID are tissues with a lot of ACE2 receptors or tissues with, that are well vascularized. The, f the f thing about COVID is the first thing it attacks is the immune system. So treating the bone marrow, treating 116, treating the spleen, the vagus, the capillaries, the arteries, and then whatever is giving them symptoms. So my friend who had the terrible migraines, we treated the vagus and all the brain parts and the migraines disappeared. So symptoms inside her head. What is inside the head? The brain. Brain is well vascularized. So 162 and 62 and then 90, 89, and 94 and 92 actually since she had a TIA that affected her right arm you could actually find on the homunculus the place where there's a little teeny clot in a little teeny capillary in that spot so right there we go Maddie has one for you oh okay when retraining proprioception for lateral ankle sprains what is your fave frequencies to run so it's basically that wipe and load. If you're rehab, if you're going to start doing any kind of exercise after rehab, you have to run 40 and 89 first. That is non-negotiable. You have to make sure the nervous system is going to not have an opinion about movement. So 40 and 89 first, and then it's that wipe and load because any time you've had a lateral ankle sprain, whether it's acute or chronic, there's going to be motor patterning compensations. So that's that white part, that 40, 84, 40, 92, 40, 94, a little bit, and then retraining it with 81, 84. And with proprioception, you the name of the game is going slow. So sometimes proprioception and muscle setting stages is just standing on a flat surface, eyes open, eyes closed. Close your eyes and then the joint kinesthetic receptors have to come into play. So there's no frequency for the joint kinesthetic receptors or the muscle spindle or the GTO. It's the nervous system as a whole. And, and 84 and the cerebellum just has to figure it out. Totally. And that's where that 40 comes first. And then 81 with proper movement that you as the therapist is guiding them through. There's no sense in them doing a proprioception drill and they're offloading. So that's your job as a therapist to say, you need to shift your weight. You need to flex. You need to verbally give them the cues. So those proprioception organs are, are compliant and are confident. So confidence is the name of the game. Speaking of retraining proprioception, that yeah takes me a little bit back to the last time we talked where you said, what's your favorite frequency? I had a patient in yesterday and she has endopathic arthritis. It's like rheumatoid arthritis, but it's different. And her toes, her left ankle and her right ankle naturally fused, her left ankle naturally fused. So her toes, the flexor tendons were just gripping the ground. So she had a surgery where they went in and they cut the flexor tendons on her toes. So her foot could be, right? All right. So do something because it doesn't feel right. It's okay. My favorite frequency in Matt. Maddie, this goes for lateral ankle sprains too. Anytime you bleed, you have scarring. All I did for her foot was scarring in the nerve. Same thing with an ankle sprain. There's no way to sprain an ankle, especially a lateral ankle. There's no way to sprain an ankle without tractioning those nerves and without bruising. Right. Anytime you have bruising, you have scarring in the nerve. You can do whatever you want to the cerebellum. You can do wipe and load. You can do whatever you want. And if the 
posterior tibial nerve or the superficial peroneal nerve or if the deep peroneal nerve, if it is scarred to the surrounding fascia, cerebellum doesn't negotiate. It just, you can't force it. 81 and 84 isn't gonna work if that nerve is adhered to the fascia surrounding it. Yeah. So I just took apart the scar tissue in her ankle, in the bottom of her foot, in her toes, on both feet. And she stood up and walked normal. I've been treating this child. She's 50 something now, but I've been treating her for 30 years. And she walked normally barefooted for the first time in let's say 25 years. Just doing scarring on the nerve and then neck to feet, 40 and 89. And she said, how do I get it to move? And I said, well, we just have to tell the cerebellum to forget everything I thought it knew about your foot. So we ran 40 and 84, it's okay. 40 and 92, because the sensory motor cortex has to forget everything it thought it knew about your left foot. And then we did 81 and 84 and had her flex it and do all that stuff and then had her walk. And then I went on to the next patient and put her in the gym with Susan and we put her on the reformer because her hip, her knee is a problem and her hip is a problem. It's the knee gets caught in between and you have a so I ran scarring in the joint capsule in her hip and externally rotated that. And we put her on the reformer and got it all together. And that's a very good point that you brought up that, and I get a lot of emails like for this magic recipe for strength and proprioception and balance and return to play. And I'm like, these will only work if you have a clean canvas to work on. And that's why FSM sports has that RP module. It's rehabilitation, recovery, and then performance enhancement. The 4089 wipe and load, like you said, that is never going to do anything unless the tissue is free of adhesions, is secreting what it needs to secrete, just has the freedom and also is healed, right? If something is still torn, you're never going to convince the nervous system to blow through the stop signs to get something that has a tear in it to move. It's just never going to happen. The nervous system doesn't negotiate and it also notify. It's yeah, you I know, I love that. It doesn't notify, doesn't negotiate. Absolutely correct. Yes. So it's all the things. And that's not to say that you can incorporate 40 and 89 and 81 and 84 and splice it in as you're working with torn and broken and releasing the adhesions. I'm just saying you still have to identify all those structures that could be at play, like the disc, the cord, like all those components as well. So it's not just that recipe. It's not just one or the other. Yeah. There was another thing with this patient. She's, she's been in pain since she's 14, right? So for a number of years, she was pretty centrally sensitized and we ran 40 and 89 a lot. And this time, as I'm working on her foot, 40 and 10, but did not run 40 and 8. And she's taken the FSM core two or three times. She's got her own machine. She's fascinating. But she said, why didn't I need 40 and 89? And I said, because and you told me that your pain was a three. You're not centrally sensitized. Something has happened in the last three with you running 40 and 89 over and over again, concussion in Vegas over and over again, you're not centrally sensitized. I ran 40 and 10 because you can't avoid your spinal cord being sensitized pathways. But you are not centrally sensitized. And she said, yeah, like when I got my tooth worked on, I just went over the top so fast. And I said, you're not centrally sensitized, but if you think about the midbrain, the limbic system, the thalamus, the hippocampus, and the amygdala all together in 89, and you think of them like a bucket that has water, rocks in it and water, right? And the bucket is pretty close to full, but it's not full and it's got eight rocks in it. And 
the water level stays at the edge of the bucket and you're just fine. Put a needle in your jaw and work tooth. That's another rock that goes in the bucket and all of a sudden it overflows. You're really good at suppressing pain now and living with this. And this was something she did on her own, watching it in the last five or six years. But you add another rock and it overflows. So you went home, you ran 40 and 89. She said, yeah, I did. I ran concussion in Vegas and I was fine. Take it back. So it's pattern recognition. It's yeah. recognizing what it's like when somebody is centrally sensitized. Yeah. They come in and they tell you they're smiling and walking and sitting comfortably. And they tell you their pain is a seven or an eight. It's no, it, uh-uh. Yeah. It's here, look at this. And that's the patient you run 40 and 89 on because the pain is really a three or four, but they mind it an eight. Yeah. That's quiet down the central system. The ability to do that, that makes FSM so much fun. But yeah, it, it is such an incredible game-changing frequency pair that I've been using in so many, and you know, the patients too, that when you tell them, okay, we're going to try this when you get off the table, oh, that's going to hurt. Like they're anticipating and it's no, you're going to be just fine. You're going to enjoy this actually. 40, 89, please. And then you run 40 and 89 before they get off the table. You have, yes, exactly. Because, and then they're like, it doesn't hurt anymore. So how did Rich and the, how did it go this time? Because you're 10 years past the time that he took the course and yeah, it, it, he was so receptive and I owe him a lot because he imparted that excitement onto the clinicians that were taking the course. And it, it's like you'd said 10 years ago, you had at least a handful of people that were in the back room who were skeptics and you felt like you had to sell it and you had to convince them. And people are coming to the courses now with excitement and this open-mindedness that is so exciting as a presenter, as an educator, because you're both feeding off of this energy. So they were so grateful. And we did a lot of really neat collaboration. People had some different skill sets. So the nice thing about this hybrid model is that we could like troubleshoot and like how we talk about patients, they could say, oh, okay, I have this patient. And instead of me answering it, getting everybody's input and you could see the critical thinking. And to me, that's the inspiring part because it's showing me anyways, that we're doing a good job of creating the language and the language and not just the frequency list or recipe. And teaching them how to incorporate FSM into what they already do. Exactly. In in their model. Yeah. How they can make it happen. So my phrase now is my job is to make your job easier. Yeah, exactly. FSM is here to make your job easier. I've been a manual therapist for 24 years and my hands and wrists are just fine. Whereas a lot of my colleagues retired 10 years ago because their thumbs and wrists were shot. Yeah. Yeah. So I have two quotes, a little piece of information and we're, we were at four o'clock. Wow. Okay. Okay. So this is one of my favorite quotes. So I do want to start the year off with this one and it is very fitting You've probably heard it before. It says, for last year's words belong to last year's language and next year's words await another voice. And to make an end is to make a beginning. Oh, yes, I like that. It's T.S. Eliot. And then this is something I want to get printed and put in the clinic because I have some cute little signs in the clinic. You might like this one too. It says, behind you are your memories. Before you are your dreams. Around you is all who love you, and within you is all you need. Oh, I like that too. Those are good ones. Those are my inspirational start the new year off with fulfillment and love and hope. Yeah. Speaking of hope, I've opened up three more spots to the Arizona sports course. So there is a waiting list. I will be contacting the lucky winners. We're going to just squish them all in there. So three days with a sold out sign on them. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're a hundred, hundred and three, I think, for 116 for, for the advanced. Excellent. Around a hundred for the symposium. So we have in the ballroom with good spacing, we can hold 150. So we still have 40 more places. And they'll uh, all come in at the last minute because that's what happens. They always do. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it's it's going to be good fun. Yay. Good. Yeah. Well, I don't have any nifty quotes as 
there's a thing that happened to me in the existential and psychological part of my life. It's the past doesn't exist. The future hasn't happened yet. So all you have is now, is today. And every day is the beginning of a new year. And actually moment can be. So every time I talk to you, it's new because, yeah. yeah, so fun. I love it. I love you. I love everybody listening. I'm full of love today. Yes, it's a good one. Great. So we will see you next Wednesday. See you next Wednesday. Bye, everybody. Bye. The Frequency Specific Microcurrent Podcast has been produced by Frequency Specific Seminars for entertainment, educational, and information purposes only. The information and opinion provided in the podcast are not medical advice, do not create any type of doctor-patient relationship, and unless expressly stated, do not reflect the opinions of its affiliates, subsidiaries, or sponsors, or the hosts, or any of the podcast guests or affiliated professional organizations. No person should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content provided in any podcast without first seeking appropriate medical advice and counseling. No information provided in any podcast should be used as a substitute for personalized medical advice and counseling. FSS expressly disclaims any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on or any contents of this podcast.